Welcome to today's session on how to use Asset Infinity for managing assets seamlessly. To log in, first enter your organization name and click Next, we've used a test ID for demonstration purposes. Click Next and move on to fill in your login details and sign in. Once inside, navigate to the left panel on your screen to see the different features available to your organization. Today we'll learn how to add an asset from the top of the panel. Once inside the Add Asset form, fill in the details as required by your organization. All the asterisk marked fields are compulsory to fill. We'll start by filling in a dummy asset name as HP Laptop and uploading a dummy image. Next, we'll move on to the Asset Code field. Although it's an optional field, you may fill in a desired asset code as required or mandated by your organization, as demonstrated here. You may also leave the field blank for the asset code to get generated automatically once the asset is added successfully. As we have done here, the category and location dropdowns follow a parent-child concept. We'll navigate to the parent dropdown and then select the child dropdown for both category and location. Then we'll re-navigate the location dropdown to a parent dropdown and select it for your reference. The status is primarily categorized into two sections, allotted and unallotted. The admin can set the naming convention in the dropdown as per organizational need as represented here. The additional information section allows you to record any additional information about the asset. You may update the asset condition at the time of procurement or transfer from the condition dropdown as shown. You could also fill in the brand and model details of the asset. Linked asset allows us to link the current asset with an existing asset, for example, while adding a mouse you may link it with a laptop. The description and serial number can be filled if required. The Upload Files button allows us to attach any relevant document of an asset like manuals, insurance, etc. for record keeping. A set of dummy information has been filled in here for your reference. In the Purchase Information, we can put in all the purchase details associated with the asset. You may select a vendor name from the Vendor Name drop-down. Then select an invoice date of the asset from the calendar pop-up. Moving on to the PO number field, we can fill in the PO number if available, otherwise, we can just leave it blank. We've placed a dummy PO number for your reference. For the invoice number field, you may again fill in the invoice number available to you or just leave it blank. We'll be filling in a dummy number for your reference. Next, we select the asset purchase date from the purchase date pop-up calendar and move on to filling in the purchase price of the asset. Here, we are putting a hypothetical value as an example. If the asset is self or partner owned, we must select yes using the toggle button and move on to selecting the partner's name from the drop-down. This feature is to be used only in case of the assets being owned by a vendor or customer. Moving to the financial information, we'll cover the assets, capitalization price. Capitalization price can help determine the value of an asset over a useful period instead of being expensed in an instant. The value can be selected from the arrows given in the field or can be typed as shown. End of life can be selected from the pop-up calendar. Capitalization date, select the date from the pop-up from which the value of the asset is to be capitalized. Depreciation, is the percentage at which the asset will be depreciated. The depreciation details can later be viewed from the depreciation report. Please note that any self or partner owned asset will not be shown in the depreciation report. Income tax depreciation, the percentage of depreciation as per income tax. The scrap value of an asset is the value at which the asset has been scrapped. This value cannot be more than the capitalization value of the asset. The error pop-up will be shown while saving for your reference. Lastly, the accumulated depreciation is the value of depreciation accumulated throughout the period of asset utilization. The allotted information section is for filling up the allotment details of an asset. We can select the department from the drop-down to which the asset is going to be allotted to. We must select a transferred to from the transferred to drop-down 
as we set the status of the asset as in use, in the earlier section. If we go back and change the status of the asset to in stock and come down to the allotted information, we'll see that the transferred to field disappears from the section. We'll again go back to the main section and change the status back to in use. Then we'll come back to the allotted information and select a transferred to person from the drop down and select an allotted up to date from the pop up calendar. In the warranty information, we can fill in the warranty details of the asset. We can select an AMC vendor from the drop down. Next, we can select the warranty vendor from the drop down. Moving on, we can also fill in the AMC start date, AMC end date, insurance start date, insurance end date, warranty end date, and warranty start date, as required, and click save to add the asset. As stated earlier, we must fix the financial information as the scrap value exceeds the capitalization or purchase value. We'll move back to the financial information and lower the scrap value. Please note that for the correct financial information contact your organization admin or finance team. We'll now move back down and save the asset. Now, we navigate to the panel on the left side of our screen and click on the asset list to view the newly added asset. On the right side, you'll see the recently added asset on top of the list of all the assets along with all the information we filled in while adding the asset. Keep scrolling to see the information displayed. Only the information fed while adding the asset will be represented here. We can now generate QR or barcode sticker using the Generate Sticker button for each asset as shown. We can select multiple options for each of QR or barcode printing as per our requirement. The options allow us to print PDFs, print locally using Asset Infinity's print utility, and print using other options like Network, Serial, and Parallel using Asset Infinity's print utility. Next, we have the Asset Transfer option, which allows us to transfer the asset to another employee or location and also change asset status and condition while doing so. Here, we'll change the allotted up to date from the calendar pop-up and assign a new user from the transfer to drop down. We can also select a transfer CC from the drop down to keep important individuals in loop. Lastly, we can put up any remarks as per requirement. We can use the update and print feature to take a printout for other organizational purposes. We can also discard or sell an asset using the discard or sell button. Inside the asset disposal form, we get to fill in the asset sold value. WDV, written down value, the reason for disposal, discard date, vendor name from the drop down, remarks if any, and a tax group from the drop down. All the financial information demonstrated here is for user understanding and will vary depending on the country's regulations and organizational norms. We'll then move on to the update asset feature, here, we can update all the information by going into the asset form such as basic information, additional information, purchase information, financial information, allotted information, and warranty information. You'll be able to see all the information that was filled originally during the add asset process. Using the checkboxes on the left of each asset from the asset list, we can also generate stickers, transfer, dispose of, or update multiple assets in a single selection. The same type of forms open up providing the option to update details of all the selected assets. We can also view asset details by clicking on the I button against each asset as shown here. We'll be able to see all the asset details originally entered while adding an asset along with some extra information like change log, movement history, warranty information, schedules, activities, and tag generate log. All the extra information is only available for assets that have been long available in the system with routine updations. We can also make use of the small buttons next to each asset as shown here to take desired actions such as generating tickets, copying assets, and printing asset details for other organizational usage. Hope this video helps you use Asset Infinity seamlessly, thanks for watching, and see you in the next one.